Hey guys, my name is Angelia and welcome to the first part of the new Asylum Challenge that I'm starting. There is a theme to it, but I am going to wait to reveal that until after I get done going through the rules and the backstory and everything that we sort of need to get done in order to be released from the Asylum. So here's the backstory and I got this from the forums at thesims.com. I will be linking it down below. You have been committed to a rundown mental health facility against your will. In order to prove that you are fit to rejoin society and earn your freedom, you must achieve the goals your psychiatrist has set for you, your aspiration. The catch? You need to s blah, 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 blah. You need to achieve your goals as quickly as possible while keeping seven other patients who you don't know and are out of your control alive and as happy as possible. Add to that budget cutbacks leading to a lack of decent furniture and limited supplies and your task gets harder. So, for this challenge, there are three different modes. I'm going to be doing the medium mode, which means I need to complete three aspirations. I was going to do the easy mode, but I didn't want this one to be over too soon. So, for the main sim, the only aspirations you can't choose are oh successful lineage, big happy family, fabulously wealthy, and mansion baron. So, for her, I believe I made, yeah, I made her a collector. Uh, well, curator whatever same thing um because i figure we're gonna be collecting stuff that's also gonna get us money and we're definitely gonna need that i think for the other ones i'll probably uh -huh. do painter and maybe writer something that you don't have to throw dinner parties or anything for because i was gonna do shaft but that one's a little bit harder especially when we don't have that much money um let's see after finishing your main sim, create seven other sims. They all must be young adults and they must have the mm. insane trait. The other two traits and their aspirations can be whatever you want. None of the eight sims are allowed to be related. Which is actually where I'm bending the rules a little bit because two of them are related, but you'll see why in a second. Um, as for the asylum, I downloaded an asylum, which I will ha have oh. all the information listed below if you want to download it. It's an amazing build, and we will also show that off in this part. All objects must be the cheapest made ones. Cheap beds, cheap counters, cheap couches, everything. You cannot have objects in the asylum which affect Sim's emotions, and you cannot prevent fires. Uh, pools are allowed, and we do have one, but they are definitely a skill building item. You're only allowed to have five of those. Um, as far as objects we can upgrade it because we're gonna have to get really good with the handiness skill because it's up to us to fix everything that breaks and from what i've seen from other challenges everything breaks constantly so that's gonna be irritating so for gameplay wise you must only be selected on your main sim you're not allowed to click on any other sims at all to check their needs if they die they die now i will probably still check on them just to see their relationships with the other sims and stuff like that but i will not control them i will only be controlling this lovely young lady right here ah. if you want to at 12 a.m you can click on the other sims to check their inventory if they have books food etc when doing this your game must be paused Cheats, mods, hacks, which boost Sims' needs or skills and are allowed, which I actually do have one of those mods, but I don't, I'm not going to be using it, but I'm just too lazy to take it out and I always forget, so, yeah. Um, you cannot use your inventory to reserve items for yourself, for example, you can't put a book or guitar in your inventory just so no one else can put it in theirs. The age settings can either be on normal or long, it's your choice. I will most definitely have it on long because I take a while with aspirations because I usually end up forgetting it, but hopefully since this challenge is centering around that, I won't forget it. No arranging of furniture to reserve or use something for yourself. So there aren't enough beds, or there's only one bathroom and all of that, so it's gonna be a lovely fight. If a sim dies, you must keep the grave on the lot. If their ghost gets too annoying, aka they keep breaking objects, you can banish their ghosts. Putting toilets and showers, baths in separate rooms is okay in all difficulties, as dying from embarrassment tends to occur too much. Now, I actually have my entire bathroom set up as one unit, so I might put a, like, a little tiny dividing wall so where there's still a chance for embarrassment, but not as much as one. It'll, it'll just sort of be like in between. Making your sim work hard in their career is okay. But you can't make other patients work hard. Now, I won't be getting my main sim a job. 
Actually, I don't know if I'll get any of them gems because I don't want them to leave. Um, because I'm really attached to all of these guys. Um, for outdoor retreat, because they did add mm -hmm. stuff for get to work in outdoor retreat. We can do, we can go to Granite Falls, but as always with the asylum challenge, if one person goes, the entire asylum has to go. So we'll be taking all seven of the rest of the patients with us, which will be lots of fun and chaotic. If a member of the asylum is abducted by aliens and comes back pregnant, you can either keep the baby and mainly age it up to an adult with the insane trait, or you can send the baby back to its home world by clicking on the bassinet. Now, that, I mean, that all depends if we lose uh -huh. one of these guys and we have room for a baby, because right now I don't have that mod installed, which allows me to have a bigger household, so we will see what happens. Mm. Now, as far as the medium mode goes, we start off with 500 simoleons. We must complete three aspirations. We can't have a TV and compute at the same time. Um, as of right now, we have a TV so they can learn the cooking skills a little bit easier just until no one sets the house on fire, preferably. One sink, one toilet, one shower slash bathtub. We have a shower. No more than five bed spots. There can only be a total seating for six. You may... Only have a total of five skill building items in the house, so choose wisely at the start. There's actually a few of them that I put in there, I'm kind of second guessing, but we'll look at them together and see what you guys think as well. Only two non-controllable sims are allowed jobs, and both must, both must be in the criminal career. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. We'll see what happens. No maids, no pizza. They can leave the lot to go fishing and collecting between the hours of 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Can only travel to other people's houses and community lots during the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. When traveling to another lot, you must bring everyone from the asylum with you. If a sim dies, one seat must be deleted until there's one seat remaining. I'm not sure if that counts for beds, too. I'm pretty yeah. sure it doesn't. Um, let's see. Did I miss anything? No. So, there is some scoring involved with that. I don't know if I'll do the actual scoring because I'm kind of just playing this for fun. But without further ado, I'm going to retype in her name, which I'm sure some of you will definitely instantly recognize. This is going to be Parvati Patil from the Harry Potter series. So I am doing a Harry Potter Asylum Challenge. I'm really excited about this. I've been excited about it since I got the idea for it. Um, so basically, this is going to be taking place maybe a year after the battle at Hogwarts, back in 1988, so this will probably be around 1999, 2000-ish. Basically, after all that, everyone's been trying- they're re blah, 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 I can't even speak today. They're still reeling from the events that happened, and Voldemort coming back, and Harry defeating him and everything, so Voldemort is not- in this playthrough. I might add him later as a ghost to the lot that's next to us, which I forgot to do, but I did add people. Um, and everyone's kind of been going through PTSD with this, and these are the ones that are going to be in the asylum because they are still dealing with that anxiety and that fear. So they do all have the insane trait. I will be playing Parvati as my main character because I know she was such a minor character from the books, but she was actually kind of one of my favorites, which is probably weird, but I purposely didn't pick out Harry, Ron, and Hermione, or Ginny, or any of the other Weasleys because they are such main characters that we kind of already know what happened with their story afterward. And... I would, honestly, I would just get way too attached and I would wind up controlling Harry, Ron, and Hermione because I love the, the Golden Trio and all of that. So we're just going to do more uh, on the minor side characters, but at least <laughs> two of them are not minor at all. But they're not as big as Harry, Ron, and Hermione. So we have Parvati Patil. She wants, she, oh, da, 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 da. Um, her aspiration is to be the curator. She is a romantic, she has the insane trait, and she's also outgoing. So this is her main outfit, and they do all basically match on most of them. So she's in her little Gryffindor sweater. I'll zoom in so you can see her. She came out super pretty, and I'm kind of in love with her. So this is her everyday wear. Let's zoom out, Parvati. This is her formal wear. 
Again, the Emma Stone dress. Hmm. Um, come on. Athletic wear. Again, with that same ponytail I'm in love with. Ah. Sleepwear, as you can see, she's in all red and yellows and golds for Gryffindor. And I did keep her stereotypical braid that her and her sister wore in the books and everything. As far as appearances go, I did base them more off of the books rather than the actors and actresses who played them. As great as they were, I wanted to go with my own sort of view on them, if you will. This is her party attire. She has the cute little yellow shoes on there. And her swimwear. So remember when I said I kind of broke the rules a little bit as far as uh, being related goes? That's because I added in Padma Patil. I couldn't oh, resist no. adding in the twins and I felt like it would be an interesting twist to have twins in the house, especially when I can only control one of them. So her aspiration is nerd brain. She's neat and a bookworm, and also insane. As you can tell, she is in her Ravenclaw attire. And this is Padma close-up. I don't know why my eyelashes keep, like, glitching through the hair. They never used to do that. I don't know if it was from, like, a recent patch update or what the heck they did, but it glitches through now. Um, and I do know that this hair glitches on me when I zoom out too far, so if she becomes bald at some point, I'm really sorry about it. Um, this is her formal wear. I did keep her and her sister pretty much matching exactly, except for the colors. Um, this is her athletic wear. I changed her ponytail. It's just a different one, but... This is her sleep wear. Also, she has a braid. Party wear. So she's in blue and the black for Ravenclaw, even though I'm pretty sure Ravenclaw is blue and bronze, but I can't find bronze shoes. And this is her swim wear. So next up, we have Susan Bones from Hufflepuff. She turned out super, super cute. I am in love with the way this girl came out. I was so excited when I made her last night, so. She's adorable. She is a redhead in the books. Ooh, yeah, I forgot to change her eye color. She does have gray eyes in the books, I believe. Actually, I'll have to double check on that because I don't remember. Um, she is from Hufflepuff. So she wants a big happy family, because again, Hufflepuff is all about family and mm. loyalty and everything, so she's also good. She has the insane trait, and I also made her a loner, which should be interesting to see in a house full of seven other sims with her. This is her formal wear, cute little yellow number, her athletic wear, sleepwear, again, yellow black for Hufflepuff, party wear, I just thought this dress really suited her, mm. and swimwear. I do... I should have downloaded the custom content of this swimsuit because there are some more vibrant colors, but I didn't. So next up we have Miss Luna Lovegood, which I know pretty much everyone's gonna be super excited about. She turned out adorable. I actually almost made her my main sim, but I love Parvati too much. Um, she is the only one I gave earrings to just because, I mean, it's Luna. And I don't have any radish earrings, so ice cream cones it is. So she wants to be a best-selling author, which I did because of the quibbler. She is creative, a geek, and also insane. So she's in her Ravenclaw gear. This is her <laughs> formal wear. I thought it was really cute. It just suits her. Her athletic wear. I really like this hair on her too. Her sleepwear. She's the only one I actually didn't give the black leggings to, so she gets cute little galaxy leggings, because, you know, she's Luna. Why not? You hear my phone vibrating? I'm sorry. This is her party wear. Uh, yeah, um, I love this dress. I just hate how it glitches the hands. It drives me crazy. And her swimwear. And again, the eyelashes are glitching through the hair. They were not doing that when I made her, so I don't know what the heck it's doing. Um, I also... I don't know if it's against the rules or not to have ghosts already, but I really wanted to add Cedric Diggory and it didn't make sense to have him alive, so I ghostified him. I didn't actually go through and kill him, he I, he didn't die, but there is a cheat you can enter that will forcibly make them into a ghost. So this is Cedric, which is a shame because he's actually, he came out super attractive. I'll have to show you eventually like a screen cap or something of him not being black and white. So his aspiration is to be a body bodybuilder. I do hope that they give us more athletic aspirations in the near future because bodybuilder is kind of the only one and it sucks. 
He is good. He's ambitious. And he's also insane. He is in his Hufflepuff stuff, so he is in, like, yellow, but you can't see it. His formal wear. Athletic. Sleepwear. I really love this sweater for some reason. Party wear. I just thought this cute little... It's this one right here. I thought it suited him. And swimwear. So, yeah. But if you don't like the ghost idea, I will totally change him back into a normal sim. He'll be alive, but I really thought the ghost idea was interesting and completely different from what I've seen other people do. So, we're just gonna roll with that. Next up, we have Dean Thomas from Gryffindor House. He is a, wants to be a renaissance sim because I didn't know what else to do with him because he's also athletic. But again, we don't have like a sports one. We just have bodybuilder. He is self-assured, insane, and he's also active. And if you remember correctly, he dated Ginny Weasley in the books. And he I'm pretty sure he was on the Quidditch team. Could be wrong. I don't know why I'm blanking on that. This is his formal wear. Kept him in red, obviously. Athletic. Sleepwear. For a lot of the outfits, I did keep them like the same sort of style, but I think it's for like formal and party that I changed it up. This is his party wear. And his swimwear. Let's change him back. This is Bliza Beanie. He was in Slytherin House along with Draco Malfoy. Oh, excuse you. He wants to be fabulously wealthy. He is non-committal. He's also insane and he hates children. So as you can tell, he's in his Slytherin wear. Let's zoom in close. I forgot to zoom in close on Dean. This is Blaze. Let's go back to, or Blaze. I think it's Blaze. Um, this is Dean. I don't think I zoomed in on him either. <laughs> this is Cedric. Again, he is actually really attractive without the ghostiness. This is his formal wear. I just thought it was just kind of pretentious and it seemed like something he would wear. Athletic wear. Sleepwear. Party. Ooh, I gave them the same shirt. My bad. Oh well. That's just gonna have to work because I like it. And swimwear. And last but not least, we have Draco Malfoy. I forgot to change him back. Hold on. Here is Mr. Draco. Now, he is one of the main characters I mentioned earlier. I really wanted him in there. I thought it would be super interesting dynamic to have him in the house with them. This is Draco. He's actually the only one I put a custom skin on because for the, I don't know, for some reason the other boys, they didn't look right with custom skins. Now the girls all have custom skins though. He wants to be, la, 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 I cannot speak today. I'm so sorry. His aspirations to be a mansion baron. He's mean, he's jealous. And he's insane. I almost gave them the materialistic trait instead of jealous, but I really wanted to play around with that trait. And it seems like Draco because he's the type who gets jealous if someone else has something that he doesn't. So it just sort of seemed to work. His formal wear. I actually didn't put him in green just because I figured Draco would be like, uh, screw you and your green rules. I'm gonna wear purple or whatever the heck I want to wear. Athletic wear. Keeps popping up. <laughs> Sleep wear. Party wear. Again, I didn't even realize I stacked them in the same one, but that's okay because they look good. And this is his swimwear. I did make his different color because again, it's Draco, so why not? So these are all of our characters. Oh, I kept Padma in her swimwear. My bad. Let's change her back. Get back onto Parvati. And we're going to click this button because we are ready to go. And I'll give you a quick tour of the asylum. And a little bit more backstory as to where I got it from and everything. And again, every bit of information about the gallery and where I got the builds from will be there in the description below. So let's cut the walls up. So this is actually a Malfoy Manor that someone built and I grabbed it from the gallery. Um, Mugwump Desk 121 actually built it. And I thought this would be a perfect idea. I was gonna do Hogwarts, but the build is so huge. And I was like, oh, that's gonna be so much empty space. I don't wanna deal with that. And there's like a basement and everything and the freaking lock, I think, costs over 1 million simoleons. Hold on, I need a drink of water real fast. 
and the bills would have been insane and we for sure would get our water and stuff turned off like within the first time so I didn't want to do that now this did come with a pool so I did keep it and it's a skill building item so I kept it in there it's probably too big actually and I forgot to put the little thing to climb in and out but they can figure it out so let's drop down here it is going to look very bare if only because we're not allowed a lot of stuff and I didn't want to add paintings and such because again bills and all of that does add up to the bill cost probably should have deleted these trees and such as well I might do that off camera and just delete these and I don't want to delete those because those look good um, but pretty much your bill cost is calculated on your actual lot amount like how much your lot is worth and then they just take like a percentage of that and put it towards it and I believe like whether you have auto lights on or off that also calculates into it so it is very bare I changed the walls um, they were about the color of this and I'm really picky I don't like my house is to be really dark in the Sam's. I like them to be light so I can see everything and it drives me crazy when they're super dark. Um, as far as skill building items go, bookshelves do not count. So I'm not too worried about that. So we do have two of those. We have a painting easel, which does count. We have a woodworking table, which is also a skill building. We have the pool, uh, chess, which counts, and a yoga mat, which also counts. So that's five. They have a... <laughs> This is actually, this is the cheapest TV. It's the freaking Penguin TV. I didn't know if I was supposed to go with kids stuff because that is typically the cheapest. But I went with it anyways because it's cute. Um, if you want me to go with the actual like smallest adult TV, I will totally switch it out. Um, these chairs are technically the cheapest because the other ones were for like outdoor retreat. They were like logs and there's like the little ottomans and such from spa day so i didn't think those counted so i grabbed actual chairs and these are the cheapest actual ones which is good because the asylum needed some coloring up coloring up really so yeah whatever so this is this is four seats right here and then there's these other two so that makes the six toilet shower i'm probably going to add like a wall like right here like a little half wall or something so it is kind of covered but also not these are the stairs that lead upstairs sorry I have like the hiccups right now uh, this is the kitchen I did make it yellow because I wanted to get some color in here and I didn't want to do pink or anything we have the cheapest fridge the cheapest sink and the cheapest stove again it's very very bland in here and it's killing me not to clutter it with decorations because I mean you've seen my four mortal sisters builds if you've watched that and I like to decorate so it's gonna be really hard not to but I don't want the bills to be crazy this is the second floor two beds right in here I actually should have probably put them like right here and right here now that I'm thinking about it hmm I might do that later off camera but for right now it's staying right there and there's another one right here, so that's one, two, three. And the, I'm a, these are supposed to be like kids' rooms, but we don't really need a kid thing yet, so I just kind of left it. I didn't really do anything with it. And then four, five. And that should be at the top. So the story behind this is that the Malfoy family, in order to redeem their good name, they moved. They moved from their mansion because uh, obviously every Death Eater who ever was knew where that was and they received so much flack and everything. So instead, they turned it into an asylum for those who needed help. Not, okay, not an asylum. They turned it into like a healthcare facility for those who did need help, especially since their own son was really struggling with everything after the war with the whole suddenly not be, being a Death Eater and never wanting to be a Death Eater because you can tell Draco never really wanted to be a Death Eater. He did it because he was forced to and it's in his family line and all of that happy stuff. So they did donate it. Oh, there's Padma's crazy hair. Um, so yeah, that's where the mansion comes in. And now if we take a cute little trip, all the, if you can, you can actually see it from here. I did add in Hogwarts. Hogwarts is here. This is an absolutely amazing build. Like, oh, I can't zoom out anymore. That's annoying. Um, 
I will actually just go to the lot eventually and show you guys it. Oh, there we go. Oh, I was being crazy. So here is actually, here's Hogwarts. I think it turned out, whoops, this is such an amazing build and they even have like the lake down here. And if you go down a floor, the Slytherin common rooms are there. And it's like all green and everything. There are some people here. Here is Minerva McGonagall. We have Argus Filch, Horace Slughorn, and Rubius Hagrid. They are, are, uh, are all elders, so I might just turn on aging for our household because I don't want them to die. And they probably will pretty soon if I, oops, sorry about that, if I don't turn off aging. Uh, Filch, I grabbed all these guys from the gallery. Filch was made by G underscore Peach. McGonagall was made by Ein Veilchen. It's like German, I'm pretty sure, so I can't pronounce it. Slughorn was made by Welverance. Hagrid was made by Rachel McKenzie 96. And again, I will have all the information in the description. Hogwarts was made by Hattie Sims, which I know she has a build up on YouTube of this. I'm almost positive. But I mean, oh my gosh, it is incredible. So yeah, let's go back to Parvati. I don't know why she's not in the first slot here. That's weird. Dean, what are you doing? Why are you right there? So that's where I'm going to leave you. We will start gameplay in the very next episode, which I will probably have up the same day as this, just because I don't want to only release the intro video on the first day. I do want to release some gameplay. So I am going to get on that, and I will see you guys in the next episode of the Asylum Challenge. Bye!